Hey guys, Mitch here with Super Platinum Achievement, and we've got our summary and highlights of the Xbox Extended Showcase that happened today to add on to their E3 Showcase. Let's talk about it in just a second. First off guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. It does help us out a ton. We really, really appreciate it. Also, if you like what you see in this video today, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate that as well. And check out our giveaway playlist. We like to give away a ton of free stuff, so maybe we can get you something for free. So let's dive into the Xbox Extended Showcase that happened today. And uh, they started off the showcase with um, giving us the teaser, I guess I should say, beforehand, saying that we are going to hear more from the developers Ninja Theory, Rare, Obsidian, Playground Games, and more. So that got me really excited because that hinted at some of these big titles that did not make their showcase, that being Hellblade 2, Avowed, Fable and Everwild. We didn't get anything on those, so I was like, okay, this is where they're going to talk about those, and I got really excited. So they start out the showcase with Forza Horizon 5, which I'm like, I mean, I felt like we got a pretty good presentation on that already. They just dove in, they talked more about the game creation mode, the real lighting technique that they used, and that you get early access to the game if you're a Game Pass subscriber. To me, I don't see why they felt the need to dive into this even deeper um, because we already got a really good look at it. So I don't know why they did this. And that kind of started the theme for the rest of this showcase here. Forgive me, I'm going to keep looking down at my notes here. But the whole showcase was basically a dive into what they already talked about during E3, this time with just more detail from some of the developers themselves. So the next thing they did talk about was we actually did get some Hellblade 2 news. However, it wasn't much. They said, we don't have any gameplay to show you or a trailer. Uh, we're just going to give you an update on our production, and we're going to show you this little uh, kind of highlight reel uh, montage, they called it, of uh, something we're going through. So some of the things they talked about, they said it is not a direct sequel to the first Hellblade game, and that it's something different. And they said, we're making it very difficult on ourselves by doing this. So we don't really know exactly what that means. It's still called Senua Saga Hellblade 2, but apparently it's not a direct sequel. I, I don't know. I mean, games like have done that in the past, but Red Dead Redemption 2 was not a sequel. It was a prequel. So we don't know. We didn't get any story details. Um, it is taking place in Iceland, and they are getting a lot of the environment from actual footage of Iceland. Um, they do have real-time lighting that they captured, real combat trading that these actors are going for, which is really cool. And, you know, just kind of highlighted all that with the motion capture and everything. But from what I got, this game is complete opposite of what I thought. Uh, originally, I thought this game was going to be, you know, possibly even coming out this year or next year. Not even close. At this point, I think this game is very far out. I think we're looking at uh, 2023 for Hellblade 2. Um, it doesn't seem like it's close at all. I think our best case scenario is end of next year, but I think they would have told us, they would have given us a release date if that was the case. I think we're looking at 2023 for Hellblade 2. And then they let us know that Xbox Design Lab is back today, which is really cool. This is where you get to design your own Xbox controller. Uh, they do have some uh, new colors they introduced, which is cool, and some pre-made designs they showed off. So that's something that's really cool. Xbox has uh, always been about the controllers and being able to have tons and tons of different options. I know a lot of people out there love to collect them. This makes the options for collecting the controller limitless because uh, you can create so many different types of controllers this way. So a uh, really cool feature. Um, I might make a controller. They didn't tell us about the price point for the new ones. I did hop onto the website and uh, it is really bogged down. So a lot of people must be excited about being able to des design your controller again. Um, I can't even get through. Every time I hit the design yours button, it just says loading, loading, and then says page not responding. So as of recording this video, I couldn't get through all the way on the website. I got to the main page and that's it. So I don't know what the price point is on these controllers, being able to customize them yourself because I didn't get that far. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get you an update on that soon though. 
Then they dove more into Psychonauts 2, um, which was nice for people that don't know the Psychonauts game. We gave them a really good idea of what it's about. Um, the art style is really unique to me. It, I mean, it's kind of a cool art style, but it almost looks more like a 360 game. I'm not going to knock on it too much because um, I haven't played it, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't really take advantage of the next-gen console, in my opinion, from what I saw. However, I'm probably still going to play it. It looks like a fun game. Um, but yeah, moving on, uh, a new game that we got was Anna Crucis, which, um, not 100% sure what the game is, but they did do a, a big in-depth on that. It's a more of an indie-style game that's kind of a retro sci-fi feel to it that's post-apocalyptic. And uh, you're fighting aliens uh, with a up to four player co-op online. And it's kind of like a horde style is what I got. And then they've got this um, system in place where it's like an AI difficulty upgrade. So it's not like the enemies just get harder, but they kind of rearrange things and make things happen to kind of throw a, throw a wrench at you and make it more difficult, like spreading your team out, um, putting weapons in more difficult to find places, stuff like that. So it seems really interesting. Um, it would be a fun game to play, depending on the price point. We didn't get a release date for that. I assume it's going to be a Game Pass game as well, because that was the big theme, Game Pass. Uh, then we got another update on Stalker 2. Once again, I don't know why. I felt like we already got a lot of depth on that in the first showcase, so I'm just going to skip over that. Uh, and then we got the announcement that A Plague Tale Innocence, the first game, because we got the announcement of uh, A Plague Tale Requiem in the original showcase, but A Plague Tale Innocence is coming out in 4K next month, July 6th. Uh, so that's awesome because I never played the first one, but this next one looked really interesting to me, so now I'm going to go back and play the first one and uh, get caught up. So that was cool. Um, then they talked about Age of Empires 4. Uh, Joan of Arc is in it. They're really taking more time with the naval combat. And um, they are also continuing the support for the older Age games that they talked about. Uh, Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 3 are both getting expansions. Um, but one thing I didn't realize was that this is not an Xbox game. Which is a big surprise considering this is the Xbox showcase. This is a PC only game. The only thing Xbox about it is that you get it on Game Pass on PC. But it's not coming to Xbox at all. So I was like, I, I, that confuses me. I don't see why they even felt the need to talk about it in an Xbox showcase. So that, once again, kind of proves to me that Microsoft and Xbox are no longer about Xbox being a console. Xbox is now a platform for gaming like Steam, what they're doing, and it's not going to be console dedicated. They're trying to get rid of that. They're done with the console wars. Uh, moving on, we got a lot more on Battlefield 2042. Once again, kind of odd. I feel like uh, DICE is more just riding the coattails of Microsoft because uh, it's definitely not an Xbox exclusive, and it's not coming to Game Pass. So there's nothing special about Xbox versus PlayStation version. Um, so I don't know, but they gave us a uh, better look at the all-out warfare, uh, the modes being Conquest, which is more of your open and free battle mode, and then Breakthrough, which is more of a guided, bottlenecked version of the all-out uh, warfare. And then moving on, where we got the rare, it was not ever wild. It was more on a pirate's life. So I, I, I'm, I'm still confused. I don't feel like people were asking for a lot more detail on that that expansion is more like oh that's cool and fun i don't think many people are like oh yeah we want to see a lot more on it um so they gave us a little bit more info and on top of that uh this sunday the 20th they're going to do a dedicated deep dive into that expansion so uh there must be a lot more than we realize about that game but i don't know just confuse me then they moved on to Flight Simulator. I do think this one was a little bit worthwhile because they gave us a lot more info on what the difference and what's going to be new with the console version. Uh, there are going to be more tutorials on how to use it. Um, and I do feel like that uh, is probably good because a lot of console gamers are more casual gamers where people playing it on PC might be more hardcore and might not need as many tutorials. Um, they're going to add labels to the, the terrain, which is kind of cool. So exploring, it's going to point out these landmarks. You have this AI, an autopilot, if you will, uh, that will kind of help you out. It'll land for you. It'll get you out of a um, sketchy situation if you're about to stall your plane. Basically make it a lot easier if you just want to enjoy the scenery. Um, then they got uh, the land anywhere mode with, you know, adding on the skis and the floats on planes so you can really land anywhere. 
And then they also said it will support flight sticks on the Xbox, which is cool. So you don't just have to use the controller, you can find these flight sticks and really, you know, dive into the simulation. And then they got really excited about the Maverick expansion too with Top Gun. So, um, you know, that's cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to try out that game. Then they dove into more of uh, Hades coming out, the PC and Switch exclusive, now on Xbox. Um, coming out to Game Pass. Um, so anybody that's a big fan of that or has wanted to play the game, here's your chance. Uh, then they just gave us a big highlight reel of everything coming to Game Pass as an advertisement for Game Pass. And once again, you know, they're still doing the three months of Game Pass Ultimate for only a dollar. So uh, if you haven't jumped on the Game Pass bandwagon already, do so. It's awesome. Um, a quick example of how good of a deal Game Pass is. I'm going to be getting probably, you know, I would have gotten no matter what, I think four to five games. I did I did the math and it was about $240 worth of games that I would have purchased uh, by the end of next year that now I'm not going to have to purchase because they're on Game Pass. So with the cost of Game Pass being Game Pass Ultimate, that adds up to only being $90 for this second half of the year. So it saves me more than 50% on these games. On top of that, I get access to all these other games, hundreds of other games I can try out if I want to. So if you don't think Game Pass is a good deal, I mean, first of all, you're wrong. Um, Game Pass is a screaming deal and you need to jump on board. If you don't have an Xbox, that's fine. Uh, if you have a PC, you can still do it. You can still take advantage of the cloud-based system on your phone. Granted, I don't think it's worth it for just cloud because cloud-based is not there yet. It's not super smooth. It's still um, in the early stages. but if you have a console or a PC, get Game Pass. There's no reason you shouldn't. If you are a big time gamer and you're gonna get these games anyway, do it. Back for Blood alone, coming to Game Pass, awesome. Super excited for that. And then we got more from Obsidian, but it wasn't avowed. Um, big let down there. It was just more on Grounded, talking about the Shroom and Doom update, being that mushrooms are now a big part. You can harvest the mushrooms and make uh, mushroom bricks now. And then they talked about their first boss that they're introducing being the brood mother and how difficult uh, she is going to be to defeat. Then we got a better look at the snowboarding game Shredders, saying that it's kind of like an open world, a very vast world on these mountains that you go to. Uh, it's going to have missions that you have to complete, more freestyle modes, and they kind of added a realistic riding sense to the game. So your left stick is going to control the board, while your right stick is going to control your body, shifting your weight from the board. So that's kind of cool. Adds a more... Um, detailed and realistic feature to snowboarding and like I said in a previous video I do enjoy snowboarding snowboarding games so I'll probably be playing that one and then we got more on Halo Infinite but it wasn't what people asked for a lot of people asked for let's see more of that campaign gameplay that we saw in the initial release and heck maybe even give us a side-by-side -side showing us how much you've improved it or even better give us a side-by-side -side on what Craig looks like now to show us how much better it is they didn't do that they showed us the exact same teaser reel that we got during E3 and then they just broke it down with the developers um, they did talk about how there's you know new characters Commando Lorette um, you've got your AI in multiplayer that's in your helmet that talks you um, you've got the same announcer in the previous games for the Slayer you know that guy uh, they dove into big team battle a little bit more and saying that you're gonna get more armor all this stuff with the samurai armor that we saw once again and that's not what most people wanted to see when they thought we were going to see more on Halo Infinite. It wasn't that. And then they're like, oh, we got one more thing. We're like, all right, here's the big announcement. Nope, not a big announcement. It was more on Scarlet Nexus, um, which, you know, looks like an awesome game. And I will say that this uh, dive into Scarlet Nexus probably did convince me to play the game. I do think it looks pretty cool. Um, they talked, showed us some actual gameplay, talked about the art style being shell, a cell shaded mixed with a, a realistic feel so it's not true cell shaded like uh, these Zelda games have been um, but it's, it's really cool art style a very detailed enemy design a lot of thought was put into these enemies with wanting to um, trigger your senses and have you have mixed feelings about them because they mixed them with something um, what they say horrific and then something beautiful so they're really really cool enemies and really unique um, so they really put some care into those I, I believe they said the development time on this game was four years which is actually pretty short for a, a game uh, you get two characters with two different stories in this game one being 
uh, I'm going to butcher these names. I'm horrible at Japanese pronunciation. Uh, Yutu Sum Sumeragi, um, who is more of a, a justice-driven character. He's out to make sure justice is served. And then Kassane Randall is a, a psychic, and um, she's very uh, competent, knows what she's doing, um, is not new to this world. She was recruit recruited. Um, so two different storylines, two different characters, and you get different perspectives throughout the game depending on which character you're playing as. Uh, it's a telekinesis slash real-time battle system, so you can move things in your environment around uh, as part of it. Uh, they said it's not just about throwing things, you get to use them more strategically, like you know, if you want, if you see a barrel of water as an example they used, you empty the barrel of water and then you can shock the water and stun enemies that way. So it's not just going to be simple like, oh, I'm throwing a truck at you. Oh, I'm going to throw this barrel at you. It's it's going to be more detailed than that. Um, and then it is an RPG style. You have a skill tree to fill out. So it looks like a really fun game. I'm excited for it. However, all in all, this showcase was... Kind of a letdown. I thought it was going to be more about games we didn't hear about, or possibly maybe an, another new game here or there, but it wasn't. It was just more depth on some of the games we already got, and some depth I don't think very many people asked for. It, it I don't think it needed to happen. The only thing that really intrigued me, like I said, I, I did like the Scarlet Nexus, and the flight simulator thing was all right, and I did like seeing more on Hellblade too. But other than that, I think it it wasn't needed. I mean, I didn't, I was kind of bored watching it because I'm like, this is a lot of stuff I already knew, a lot of stuff I don't care about. I just want to play the game or see more gameplay um, from things we haven't seen. So I don't know. Um, you know, I'm not mad at them. I mean, Xbox still had the best showing at E3, but that's not saying much. E3 was a big letdown so far this year, and we're going to give our full highlights here uh, probably by the end of the week, hopefully, or beginning of next week on E3. But this on its own, nothing great. Um, really bummed out about that. So Avowed, Hellblade 2, Everwild, what this tells me, those are a long ways out. I mean, they are not close. We would have gotten at least something. But I think we are looking at 2023, and the rumor for Everwild was 2024. So uh, these games that they teased last year, um, you know, that was really unfair for fans if they're that far out teasing us with these games and then not having a release date anytime soon so that's kind of my thoughts on this whole thing but that's the highlights and the summary for you guys um do you agree with me do you disagree with me let me know what you think in the comments down below if you like this video give us a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button once again it does help us out a ton and we really hope we see you again on super platinum achievement we'll see you guys